This is the second step of connecting a list or library for cross-site publishing so that it's available from a, a source site where you want it available on some other display site. In the previous video, we looked at setting up the source list and getting it to be crawled and getting the managed properties all set up. In this, we want to look what it will take to set up the catalog so that we can convert a list to make it a catalog and then on the, the display site, how we could then connect to that catalog. So here we have the list on our source site. This is where the, the list or library is going to live. Now we want to go ahead and make this and turn it into a catalog. So what we can do if we go to the list settings is we'll see a catalogs settings option available on any list or library. Now if you don't see this, that's because you have not activated the proper site collection scoped feature yet. So let's go look at that site collection scoped feature by going to site settings and then there's site collection administration. We will see the uh, manage set of site collection features and we need to make sure that the cross site collection publishing has been enabled, which it already has here on this site collection. You need to make sure that this feature is enabled on both the source site as well as the consuming site. I have found that you need it in both. So let's go ahead and go back to that list and let's go back to the catalog and let's see what it would take to enable this list as a catalog. If you click on catalog settings, now I've already activated this list as the catalog to help through this demo but we'll look to see what it would take to really set this up. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure that enable this library as a catalog is checked. That's the big thing that you really need to do to make sure that this is going to be a library that's now available as a catalog. You'll also want to make sure that there is some ID field selected. Ideally, my recommendation is just go with the ID for now. This is going to be the field that would be used. It needs to be a unique identifier so that a particular item can actually be found on a consuming site. And I'm going to leave the other options for now because we don't want to get in an activation hierarchy because that's not needed for this particular site. So let's click OK. And once we click OK, that's really it. You do need this content to get crawled yet again so that it is actually available on other site collections. OK, so now on our consuming site, the site where we want to consume the data, we need to connect to that catalog. So to do that, we're going to go to Site Settings. And on Site Settings, we need to make sure again that under Site Collection Features, the cross-site collection publishing is enabled here. OK, once that's been done, we go back to Site Settings. Under Site Administration, you're going to find Manage Catalog Connections. So let's go ahead and click on Manage Catalog Collections. What will then happen is you can now connect to a catalog. And how this works is that anytime a list or library is turned into a catalog, Search knows that. So whatever search service application you're connected to is going to show you all of the catalogs that are now available to you to connect to. So we can see here, I'm on the demo search site collection, but we can see on the demo list data, our source site, we can see that that library in question is available to us that we can connect to we can connect a, d a couple different ways. One is we can integrate the catalog into my site and SharePoint will go ahead and create a bunch of stuff for us. And then you need to select some navigation hierarchy, et cetera. In this particular case, I don't want to do that. I want to connect, but I don't need to integrate the catalog. What I'm trying to do here is just make the library available to me as a result source so that I can just use the catalog. I can consume the data. As soon as you do that, all these other options are then grayed out. We can go over these options in, a, in another walkthrough. But for this case, let's just go ahead and connect our catalog to our consuming site. If that catalog is not yet available, make sure that a full crawl has occurred as well on your, your source site. Once it's been connected, though, we can see we could disconnect it if we wanted to, but we don't want to do that. We're, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and go to a page. Uh, I created a content page, and uh, I already have a content search web part here, but let's add a new one. So I'm going to click on add a web part. And in this case, I'm going to add a content rollup and I'm going to add a content search web part. So this whole thing is predicated on you having an enterprise license. If you're on-prem, if you're on SharePoint Online, such as I am here on an E3 license, uh, you've already got all this enabled. So you should not have a problem adding a content search web part. So I'll click on add a web part. And what I want to do now is I'm going to edit this web part. I'm going to change just a few little things here. One is I want to go ahead and show a lot more items. I'm going to show 20 because I know there's more than three items in my source list. Let's go ahead and click on change query though. If we set everything up properly, if we switch to advanced mode, when we say select a query, which is effectively going to a result source, if we did this right, our catalog is there as a result source. So we can select that. We don't need any query text because that result source, we want everything in it. And if we did it all right, we can see that all the data within our list is now available to us, which is, I think, pretty cool and slick. So go ahead and click OK. And what we should now see 
is in this first query, this new content search web part that I added, we'll see the list of data, which is just pulling in our basic content from our a particular library. Now, if we scroll down, we'll see the same data again. How did that happen? How did I set that up before my catalog connection was created that I, I was able to actually pull that data? Well, it's kind of the power of the search here in uh, SharePoint Align 2013-2016. Let's go ahead and go down to that content search web part, and let's go see what's going on. What we'll find is that this content search web part, I pre-configured. What I did in this query was I did not link to that catalog. Instead, what I did was I linked to the data found within that particular path. And I was able to do that because I had permission to it. With the catalog, we, we're still uh, security trimmed, which is pretty cool. But it's a little easier, I think, to be able to use that catalog connection if we know we're going to have a source site and then we want to go ahead and publish it elsewhere. You can use the whole catalog feature to create the faceted navigation, which can be very fascinating with catalogs and this cross-site publishing. But in this case, I think it was just cool to see what can happen by just creating a list or library, turning it into a catalog, and then integrating it into a consuming site to then display that data.